four women are supposed to be here. Well, I could go to the far corner. If if you yes, you want. What do you if think? you want to move down here, you can. I guess I don't think there's an issue with the two end seats. Is the rotations in the middle? Is the mayor pro tem always sits on the right of the no, chair? No, no, I understand. And the, and the past mayor sits on the left. So what about this? You know, I guess my chair can be at either corner, but maybe you won't have to worry about me. Then. If I move to that area. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, roll call. Note for the record that all council members are present. So uh, I think we'd like to make some uh, changes in the agenda, but first I'd like to say two things. Um, uh, first of all, um, the uh, city attorney for this evening is Valerie Armento, who's filling in for Hal Topple, who's on a well-deserved vacation. He's actually supposed to be retired, but not quite yet. So I wanted to make the, that announcement. Um, and then uh, when we do um, adjourn the meeting, I'd like very much for it to be in memory of Dora Alaman. Oh. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about her later, but I'm sure most of you know Dora. Um, and then we had some suggestions for moving the agenda slightly because of who's here and so forth. And Clark, did you want to? Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor is uh, suggesting that we move uh, item 10, uh, Mayor Council Matters, to after oral communications number one. That way uh, we can uh, uh, address some of the stuff I think a lot of folks are here for. So um, that way they can choose to stay or, or leave early if they wish. Okay. Yeah, I know there's some kids too, so they're school aged children and okay. want to get them out of here. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Only if they want to. I mean, yeah, it's, right. it's up to the yeah. parents. So. Yeah, so that, that was item C, right, Clark? You I, item item ten. Item ten. Yeah, just item move C. the whole mayor council matter. The whole item. The whole okay. Item. Yeah, that way we can dispatch. With I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So we've shifted the order of the agenda. <clears throat> But we still have oral communications as the first item. And uh, I have um, Mr. David Needham. Hi, my name is uh, David Needham. I am a resident of Brisbane for about six and a half years. And thank you guys for hearing me tonight. Um, I just really wanted to express my excitement for all of the opportunity that I think is to come uh, with uh, the EIR being published. And just the more I'm digging into the Baylands, the more excitement I think amongst myself and other members of the community have for the possibility that's out there. Um, and one of the things that I just uh, really just ask is we all kind of dig into this is to as much, I think, effort that was put in to solicit the community's feedback in the planning sessions that kind of went into this, that we re-engage the community likewise and kind of thinking about what we do afterwards. And I think the, the air committee is a great step, but also thinking about different ways to engage both families who have kids, like I think tonight, uh, uh, at various times to really express, I think, a lot of the ideas uh, of, of what can be done um, sustainably, both for the environment, but also economically as well. Um, so I just want to just express, uh, again, excitement and just um, uh, a sentiment of, of just request to help and, and figure out how we can, again, engage uh, the community as we uh, proceed along. Great. Have you signed up for the Citizens Committee? I have. Yes. I have. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
I just, I just, I'm making it just another request okay. because I, because I right. feel very passionately about it. And I think uh, it's a great opportunity to solicit a lot of uh, feedback from the families of Brisbane who, uh, again, put a lot of the feedback into the plan. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. That's great. <clears throat> Dana. She's here? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Um, I submitted a letter to the Council about um, my observation of a Schlag Lock meeting um, on Saturday, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to summarize it here. Um, Essentially, the uh, San Francisco community was asked to come together because, and I quoted, um, there was no funding for public amenities. So one of the things they asked the community was would they accept higher buildings and more um, units of residents. In that discussion, they never indicated um, how big the units were going to be. Um, it, the difference would be 335 units, how many people that would bring, um, and yeah, no, I, I, what drives me nuts is that all of a sudden somebody on, in Brisbane speaks of jobs housing balance. There is no jobs housing balance on the San Francisco side. It's almost entirely housing. And um, out of that discussion, one of the things they chose to do was the com move the community park southward. And I asked the question if that's the land that's most toxic. I believe it is, but of course my answer never um, got, um, uh, my question never got answered. Um, so they, th from what there has been an EIR on their side, uh, uh, San Francisco side of the border, um, they're now considering 335 more units, wider streets, which means less open space. And uh, because the San Francisco Fire Department wants wider streets for access. And they were also com to, uh, coming up with discussion of funding mechanisms which uh, included um, tax credits for the market because it would be bringing um, in new revenue, um, the restoration of that building up at uh, Blanken, I believe it is, um, ad additional subsidies for housing, using uh, park and uh, transportation grants, potentially a mellow ruse or a special um, use district. And I know that, or at least I believe from what I've read um, about the EIR process, you're really not supposed to discuss financial issues or the economics is not part of the checklist of the environmental impacts. And so this is of a concern to me is that they get something approved and then they come back and say, we want more but we're gonna give you less, how about that? And they only want to have one develop, uh, one approval process. They don't wanna to have to keep coming back to the public. I can assume that will be the same for this side. So I would, um, you know, one, I'm saying this so that you're informed, but also, you know, the red warning signals go off. Beware that even if they get as much as they want, they're going to be back asking for more. And um, anyway, one thing that somebody on our BBCAG had mentioned was that there were some grant applications uh, whose deadlines were, are very close to now um, for parks. And the question was, can San Francisco apply for the park grants even though there's not an agreement in place? And San Francisco uh, Planning uh, Department was saying, oh, well, we'll look into it. Sure, we'd love to find out that. So I was curious. I tried to find what she had mentioned, that it was um, prop something. Um, so I went on the state budget or the state grants, um, california.gov, or grants.gov, to try to find out what these um, recreation 
um, grants were that she was speaking of, whose deadline is in the future, but instead what I stumbled into were the grants that recently, d whose deadlines just passed, that Brisbane could have applied for if we had had the focus to do it. And um, the w one that was most irritating was the Trails um, and Parks grant which um, had just, the deadline was January 9th. It was Wednesday of last week. Um, and so I will ask how the city goes about prioritizing the use of funds that are out there for recreational facilities. I don't want to say anything negative about the use of the Walsh grant for the purposes that just came about. But I know a lot of city t um, time was spent in meetings to flesh out the, the tot lot. And I'm wondering where's the equal city time being put into other amenities that this town needs, the writing of grants that this town needs. And in specific, I was on Quarry Road the other evening, and I, it, it was a dark night, and I tripped on one of the divots in the road where it appears that we will have a landslide off of Quarry Road if somebody doesn't take action. Um, I don't want you to close it because it, it's unsafe. I want to bring this up that you, action needs to be taken. It needs to be on somebody's agenda, a committee or some, some, you know, one of the commissioner, excuse me, one of the council members taking it on as their task um, to make sure that we don't lose this wonderful asset that was paid for <coughs> by park bond money in a previous cycle. And um, the conditions, in my opinion, are, are open to a lot, but lack of lighting and s sealing the cracks so that they don't become more dangerous and, well, you know, garbage cans and things like that. Um, the, the way you go about structuring what you want uh, in a grant could be everything that we need. And in my observation, the grants that uh, recently came out of, I think it was Prop 40 or Prop 82. I don't have my glasses on. But anyway, San Francisco got $5 million. Trust for Public Land got $8 million. East Palo Alto had three grants totaling like $8 million. So why are we sitting here? spending our time just writing grants for um, a developer, I, I, I'm, I, I can't understand it. And so I would hope that um, the city can put things in balance. And um, the last thing I was going to say, because I can't be at this whole meeting, was that San Francisco had a, a position open with Kevin Mullen leaving, and they posted it South in, San Francisco. excuse me, South San Francisco. They posted it in the Peninsula Progress of the sol solicitation for interest to the Office of City Council member. Um, I just wanted to share that with you. We're not the only community that has these issues, and um, this is how South San Francisco chose to approach it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, address one question to uh, the recreation director. Um, I know that there was some talk about applying for grants on the recreation Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, and so my question is, uh, how is that proceeding or is that happening? Uh, and my second question is, uh, is the issue of Quarry Road on the agenda at some point down the line? Um, the issue of funding the Parks and Recreation Department is on the agenda for the Parks and Recreation Commission. The 
at their next meeting, I think it will be in February, they're going to be talking about setting priorities. There's a number of projects that the Parks Recreation Commission see needs for throughout the community. There is um, needs for fields. There is needs for other playgrounds. There is uh, obviously need for improving the, quarry, the Crocker Park, Park Trail. So they're trying to work together to try and determine those priorities while at the same time maintaining the services like the pool, um, like Mission Blue Field, and the other <coughs> services that are already being provided, trying to work through that balance. Okay. So it's <clears throat> under consideration is kind of the... Yes. All right. I mean, right. There are a number of other projects right. as well. I mean, there has been talk about a handrail up on Centennial Walkway. So, I mean, there's just a slew of projects okay. that the commission is looking at. Okay. And what the council liaison committee had asked the commission to do is look towards putting a priority on their capital projects. Okay. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Um, was, was your question also about are we applying for any of the grants for the, from the uh, prop? 84 or 40 funds? At this time, we are not. Um, you know, we are working through staff to try and do as much work as we can on grants. Uh, there hasn't been a conversation of the Parks and Recreation Commission to develop a grant writing committee. Um, that's part, of, I think, part of their conversation in trying to determine how do you fund the Parks and Recreation programs on a long-term basis, which they are trying, which they do have a committee working towards. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, yeah. if, if I could um, piggyback on that, I, I'm just more curious about the, um, what I don't see is Dana, she leave? Oh, there you are. <clears throat> about the trip hazard on Corey Road, if maybe we can have the city engineer take a look at that and see uh, uh, if there is some s potential sliding going on or just kind of do an assessment and perhaps Dana, you can point out where it is. Yeah, I mean Corey Road's a long way, and part of it's part of it's the city, but part of it, you know, the Corey's supposed to maintain. So, if it's in the city portion of it, then okay. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like someone has been working on the slope stability there, um, where there was an undermining, undermining of the roadway to a certain degree there. Yeah. It, it gave that impression to me the last time I walked it that mm -hmm. that they're, the city engineer, I'm sure, is should be aware of it because it looks like someone's been doing some some work on it there. Okay, yeah. And, and that might be something that, you know, I know that we do the slurry sealing, the annual slurry sealing on the streets, <clears throat> and that's probably part of a maintenance there that hasn't been done yeah. in a long time and probably could help. I think uh, that was probably Dana's point, and maybe we want to take a look at that and see if that's something that we can put into the next next budget. But I'd like an assessment from the city engineer first. So that's how yeah. reasonable. That, yeah, that I'm makes sure sense. that makes sense to all of us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a, uh, Jamie, do you want that oral communication? Yeah, okay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, Honorable Mayor and Honorable Council members. Honorable citizens and honorable staff. <laughs> I wrote on it order of agenda for a reason because oral communications, uh, the first part of oral communications often starts before the new items come up and they end up way, way, way down the line and sometimes it's quite late in order to get in to say something about new items. So I'm asking if I might say something about a new item because I can't stay. And with your gracious permission, first thing, thank you, Dana. 
Anyone opposed? Sidori? What? That she do, that she go ahead? Oh, to talk about an uh, item in the new business. Uh, On the agenda? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. First, I wanted to thank Dana uh, for getting this information for us as a Park and Recreation Commissioner. I'm really happy to know that there are grants out there. I'm very sad to know that we missed all the dates on them. That's a lot of money. And we're nickel and diming every budget we can to find a way to run this program. And we can write grants. Even if we paid someone to write a grant, it would be worth it to us. This is not something we should pass up. We should never pass up grants for anything that's available to us. This is free money if we do the work. <laughs> I'm looking for something. Went down to the community center I used to go down there for city council meetings. And I went down and I went looking. And I'm looking now. I'm looking for footprints. I'm looking for the footprints of the people who have gotten themselves up to the podium for the last 24 years and had something to offer, had a question, had a point of interest brought research, brought an opinion. I want to see that those people are people that are heavily considered when appointing, when you have the opportunity to appoint someone to a position. This is not a beauty contest. We're not looking for a pretty face that, oh, maybe they can get elected in November. That's November. The next asteroid that hits the Earth could be in June. That'll be it. We'll forget about it. November's November. This is now. We don't need a pretty face. I want to know where those footprints are and who they belong to. And who are those people who got themselves down here or up there and stood up and voiced concerns and asked for your help and asked for you to take a position and gave you information and did research. You've heard me say this before, and did their homework. I asked a question quite a while ago regarding a very large report that was about 500 pages, and I said to Councilman Conway, have you read it? And we remember that. And I think there was a little bit of testiness involved, maybe on both parts. And I had to leave, and I went home and watched the rest of the meeting, and I remember hearing this on, over the television. And Jamie Dunn, if you're still here, yes, I did read it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do those things. I think you have a lot of work to do. So. In choosing someone, you really have to keep in mind somebody who's willing to do the homework. Not just a pretty face, not somebody that's, oh, he's such a good guy. Oh, she's so nice. Let's see him sit up here when somebody's stringing him up by their thumbs. <laughs> and they've got to come through. They've got to come through with some answers about how to keep this city solvent. That's a very different picture than a nice guy or a really nice woman. Look for those footprints and be really honest about who does the work. You don't go picking a personality. Oh, we think we can get along with this guy. This guy will fit. This will fit. We'll fit well. Let's get down to business. There is business to do. This is a city that we're running here. I don't say we in the royal we. I'm saying we and we following you and hoping to get you to listen to us. 
So I'm looking for the footprints. I hope you're looking for the footprints. And I honestly say, if there's a person appointed whose feet haven't stood in the fire, how the heck did they get appointed? How the heck could they get appointed? Okay. That's, that's my point. Okay, got it. All right, and thank you very much. And thank you again, Dana, for finding out that information. And I am so delighted that you took concern and issue over grants. We need to do that. We can't give up money. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Michelle, did you like that? Yeah. Okay, please. Michelle Salmon, Brisbane resident. I don't think I'm stepping in fire right now. I think it's more like <laughs> something less pleasant. <laughs> I'm really glad the 49ers are doing so well. And I'm also not terribly unhappy that they'll be moving. But at the beginning of the season, the people who run the parking lot came and asked if they could run the parking lot again this year. And they promised. I mean, he got up here and promised and said that the garbage would be picked up by 6 a.m. the next morning after the game. Well, that's not been the case. Um, <coughs> not this past game on Saturday, because I wasn't here this weekend, so I didn't get to see. But the game before that, the garbage stayed in the lot for over a week. And yes, at one point, it had been gathered up more or less into a bag which was then spread out again by probably animals. And, and then the garbage is along the freeway on-ramp, and the garbage was then in the lagoon um, out at Candlestick, you know, that lagoon. And that's not very good um, stewardship and not keeping their promise. And, and the, I don't know if the Niners are planning to be here next year or they'll be at their new, new place. But when we make agreements like that, they need to keep up their end, and they didn't. And this morning I stopped, and the, and, the, and the lot was all cleaned up, but there was broken bottles on the roadway, uh, on the verge of the roadway, and garbage everywhere. So it wasn't very pleasant. And while I'm talking about garbage, not fire, Tunnel Road looks awful still, just awful. And, and they, I know they go by and pick up some of the big garbage, pieces, <laughs> like, like, like the mattresses or whatever, or maybe, I don't know who does that. But there's still just lots and lots of garbage and lots and lots of weeds and lots and lots of debris along the sides of the road. And it's really, you know, be it becomes a safety issue. And I don't know, I mean, I know some of it's the responsibility of, of the property owner and how, I don't know how much of it is the responsibility of Brisbane um, and exactly where that line is. But that's not, a, I mean, a lot of people come to Brisbane that way and leave Brisbane that way. And it doesn't set a very good example at all to have a lot of loose garbage all along the way. So I'm just going to keep raising the issue until it gets taken care of, because I drive there every day, and I find it really disgusting, and I find it unsafe, and it's dangerous to pull over, because you don't know if you're going to be, you know, like to get out of the way for somebody. You don't know if you're going to run over something or, or, you know, have your tires cut up by a bunch of garbage and glass on the side of the road where you should be able to pull over if you need to. So. I'd like to go around a bicycle, you know, make room for a bicycle because they're in the road because the bicycle path isn't there anymore. So, sorry to be a harpy about it, but I'm going to keep on it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I know that uh, former Mayor Lentz was working on that project for a while to try to, with, with Mr. Sharfman, right? Well, I just gave him a hard time every time I saw him, <laughs> but uh, I know that, that Clay had, had been working with uh, UPC on that and we, we we installed those two debris boxes. Is that at our cost? Or the, no, that, that was offered by South San Francisco Scavengers. That was just offered by them. All right. And I have seen some debris in there. I don't know if that has really helped, but you're right. I, 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 go, I go on tunnel pretty much every morning. And I don't like seeing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the only thing <laughs> that we really can do is just keep, keep pounding them. And, um, but it is a... De debris boxes aren't advertised. They're just put out there and it's kind of static. Yeah. So the people that are guilty of the dumping aren't going to look at the debris box because they don't want to yeah. get caught. No, no, <laughs> I, know what it's, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a psychology it's, there yeah. that's going on. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate. It's the site itself. I mean, it's just, you know, it's kind of isolated and it's an old dump and people just, you know. That I'm sorry. I suggested to Jonathan Surfman that if they cleaned up 
the whole area at one time and cut back all the bushes and cut back all the ways that people can hide while they're dumping, that they would have a lot less dumping problems and it would start to go away if they actually maintained it instead of just kind of like picking up the garbage once a month when we really bitch about it. So you know, you're right, Michelle. Uh, Clay, what what kind of um, like kind of an agreement do we have with with the UPC regarding tunnel? I mean, is it to, to to apply a little bit more leverage on UPC to to clean up the site? I mean, it's more of a good faith thing, isn't it? Yeah, it. I mean, they're respon It is their uh, their road, and they are responsible for the uh, the debris there. We have. Um, I mean. Earlier this year, they instituted um, a program where they were going to run their truck up there every Monday afternoon and pick, because uh, I think the feeling is that a good portion of the um, uh, debris that's left there is done over the weekend. <clears throat> so they were going to do on Monday afternoons, and I think that they've done that for the most part, although there have been some times I've gone up there where it's been pretty clear that they haven't. Um, so, I mean, we will continue to to talk to them about that. I know we did talk to them about cutting back the bushes at one point in time, and I think there were some pros and cons to that. So if I can explore that a little bit further and I can report back to the council. Um, and in the meantime, I think we just need to continue to, you know, put the pressure on them to um, keep it as clean as, um, as possible. Um, it's a difficult site, um, you know, in mm. terms of mm. the type of activity that we've seen, and it's a difficult one for, uh, for us to enforce. I mean, the police, you know, will enforce. I mean, if anybody ever sees somebody out there and they can get a, a driver's license or a driver's um, license plate, license plate. Thank you. Um, you know, we'll we'll investigate that and, and try to enforce against it. Um, the problem is that we've had times in the past where the police have gone and investigated, and you'll actually find somebody's like home address and their um, uh, some identification. But usually, when you contact the person, then they simply tell you that, you know, they hired Joe whatever to take it away, and they don't know what happened to it after that. And you know, and that's probably what happened. I mean, they're probably being honest about it, but you know, it's it's the hauler that's the one that's you know trying to get away without having to ex um, have the expense. Sure. So it's a difficult. All I'm trying to say is that it's a very difficult thing to try to enforce. But we'll continue to have that conversation with them. We'll continue to try to do what we can. I will talk to them again about the uh, cutting back the bushes. Because um, uh, I do think there are some areas where there, uh, you see stuff kind of thrown off to the side that it looks like maybe somebody has kind of done it there because uh, it's a little more secluded area. So that that might help a little bit uh, if we if we do that. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think also uh, just that that regular Monday morning pickup. I, I don't think that they're real consistent with it. So if we could. Yeah, I, yeah, I will talk to him. I feed to the fire to to, yeah. to doing that. I, I would agree with that. I, I'm not sure that it's consistent, as consistent as it needs. <clears throat> yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Clark? One more is the uh, 49ers thing. Michelle, they'll be moving there in the fall or late summer of 2014 season, so they'll be here this next season. So, uh, with regards to the garbage, uh, I'll talk to them. Talk to them on that too. Okay. Jamil? Yeah, listening to the problems on the tunnel road, I thought I made two cents worth. Um, that particular road uh, is getting really, really problematic, and especially in the rainy season. Uh, near this uh, Sierra Point, uh, just before the Sierra Point, there is a big dip there. And I've seen a lot of people d don't slow down, they just go right through there and what i'm worried is one of these days you're going to have a accident there so that particular dip uh, and as i mentioned earlier also many many times that it has to be taken care of almost every year because the type of the soil you have is basically a dump it was a dump and it, the road was built on top of that so it's going to settle every every season so I think before the rainy season starts, there should be a checkpoint that we're going to go and fix that. And I don't see that's been done. So I highly recommend that that should be part of the operating procedure. The other thing that I noticed that uh, has happening in this city is this, this city, we really like to have the trees 
all along the both sides of the streets, but we really don't pay the attention where we put the trees. A lot of times we are putting the trees right in front of the signs, where it says a stop sign, and then they, if you put the tree right in front of the stop sign, then there is no reason to have a stop sign there because nobody can see it. And I brought that to the attention of the staff several times. And again, I think the, when we put the, the trees, you had to look at the line of sight. When the person is coming at 25 miles per hour, how far back they can see the, it should be clear line of vision for that stop sign or yield sign or whatever sign. Do, in that particular angle, there should not be anything. But we are putting trees right in front of that, and as a result, a lot of times I've seen people just ignore it. They just go right through that. And the other thing, I think it's probably the mentality of the citizens here or whatever, they will park right in the middle of the street and start talking. And they don't care whether some three people are standing behind that. They just, they think that's their right, you know. And there are people trying to overtake them and there's other people coming, they're not paying attention. So there should be some kind of a, I think, you know, in the luminary or somewhere you can put that, that please do not park in the middle of the street and talk. You can always, you can always pull to the side. There's plenty of parking on both sides. They can pull, but they will like to stay right in the front and then open the door and start chit-chatting for a half an hour. And the people are standing right behind that. So I think those are the, some of the issues. And I think the, the traffic committee has to, to be really cognizant of a lot of issues. There are a lot of issues with the streets itself. A lot of streets need attention. A lot of very, very bad curves. A lot of very bad slopes. And um, I think the longer we wait, the more it's going to be difficult to fix and more it's going to cost. So I think that I know the times are hard. We don't have the money, but we have to think about this and we have to put it in a timeline as to when we're going to do this. Maybe there might be some funds we can apply for. And there are some funds with the FHW and other, other agencies where we can tap into. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think we are going to be uh, rejuvenate, rejuvenating the whole uh, street safety issue, and uh, we're working on it and be coming to a subsequent city council meeting. So that's underway. Um, I think that that uh, dip right before Sierra Point, I think that's actually uh, city responsibility, isn't it? I mean, that's not Tunnel Road. That's L Sierra Lagoon Point Road. Parkway, right? Lago Lagoon Road. And well, it's really right before you get to the Radisson Hotel is where you probably... Right. No, I was talking about by... Uh, Zero by Point Lumber. Kinder Zero Morgan. Point Lumber, that dip? Mm -hmm. Okay, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking there's a dip also right as you come right up to the Radisson Hotel, and that's a pretty big dip. But then there are a whole bunch of dips on Tunnel Avenue because you're right, it's a road that mm -hmm. has uh, the, the, the ground underneath is settling very unevenly. And, differential uh, settlement. Some of the, uh, it, it, I don't know what the agreement is because they keep saying, well, we don't want to do too much maintenance because, you know, after all, it's going to change one of these days. But on the other hand, it, some of those dips are getting pretty bad and there's a lot of flooding. I think we've all observed that. So I guess that's something else to talk with Mr. Sharpman about. Yeah. It's a liability right. issue this week. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara. My car is the first thing dated and it's suspension shot. From Tunnel Road? I guess. Yeah. All the other places ever driven. Yeah. Okay. So we, we need to address that too. It is getting pretty bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, oh, Carolyn. Yeah. <coughs> Now that we're talking about safety and traffic, um, I think that the Lagoon Way and Tunnel Road, where you turn onto Tunnel Road at night, is so dark that I can barely find the, um, the turn at all. And I don't think it would be that difficult to just maybe put some reflector strips or something so that we would see. And also in Sierra Point, in the uh, parkway, um, as you're coming 
on to, I don't know what the road is, Sierra Point. You turn from the, um, the Yacht Club, and then you turn onto the road. Uh, it's, it's very dark there. It, do you know the names of those streets? Uh, and I can't find, I can't figure out how to turn. And all it would take was Marina some reflect. Boulevard. It's Marina, yeah. It's yeah. Marina yeah. Boulevard. Yeah. I think we could just put up some reflector strips so that, or something, and it wouldn't be uh, very difficult or expensive to just put reflector strips. You know, and I can tell you, you know, if people are coming from the Yacht Club or, if, you know, if they've gone on one of those cruises in that big uh, paddle boat, I don't know that they're particularly sober. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I think it would be a really good idea to put some reflector strips in these two locations. Yeah. Okay, um, I remember that the first item you mentioned, the uh, corner of Lagoon and Sierra Point Parkway, I think you brought that up once before. Uh, and I believe that the city engineer was investigating that, if I recall. I don't know where it stands now, but I, but everybody agreed that there is a problem there. and But I don't know what we're going to be doing about it. Do you know? Well, I, I'm just going to make sure I understand exactly what we're talking about. Is that is that where, where you come off the freeway? Yeah. I right. thought he had put reflector strips out there. I'll have to check with him. Yeah. Okay. Because I know that there, there was an effort to, to uh, address that issue. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people have experienced it. Where's the road? Actually, um, on, on Carolyn's comment out by the Harbor Master's office, there were a couple reflector strips put on the center medians there. Mm -hmm and an extra stop sign that's about eight feet after one stop sign, which I'm not quite sure really <laughs> does anything to have three stop signs right there. But revenue uh, generator. They, <laughs> they did make a, a concerted effort and did put some a couple reflector strips on that area out by the Harbor Master's office. Okay. Michael. Michael Barnes, Brisbane resident, and I'm also still the president of this, the Community Benefit High School group. I just wanted to let all parents in Brisbane know it, that we are still accepting applications to the Shasta Charter High School that will be starting operation in the fall of this year. So if you have an eighth grader entering ninth grade in the fall of this year, you can still fill out an application form, and the likelihood is very high that would be accepted to the school. If you need an application form, you can contact me or check our website yourcbhs.com. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Do we have that web that website address on our website? Wouldn't it be a good idea? Good link. Yeah. Okay, make a link. Yeah. yeah make right. A link. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay, if we move on to <laughs> I don't know if it's it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we agreed to move to mayor council matters. You know, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Oh, sure. Um, you know, under mayor council matters, you know, item A, uh, a lot of the, well, th this particular section uh, pertains to um, former council member uh, Sipper Richardson's right. retirement. Right. Right. Uh, maybe it might make better sense, and just for timing, too, for some of the folks uh, that are in the audience to, to put that uh, under item B, under new business, then it's all related to that particular section. Because th this might take a little while for us to go through these things. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to make a motion to that effect? Okay. Just so moved, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm not okay. quite sure what what... You just uh, under, item no. item A, A under Mayor Council Matters uh, review and update urgent council list of appointments. These are all the the uh, appointments that Seppi uh, was a part of. Correct. And then just moving those to uh, new business under item B since uh, we're, that this particular section uh, deals with uh, Mayor. I mean uh, former Council Member Richardson's uh, retirement. That's all in one okay. So we just shifted it. Um, so that means we have the, the city selection uh, committee appointment and then the, uh, the report from the two by two subcommittee right. would be the next two items. Yeah. Okay. That'll work. All right. 
Okay, the city selection committee appointments. Um, maybe the city clerk can sort of bring us up to date on what the deal is there. Let me look at my paper one moment. Okay. Actually, I could probably parrot it. I think there's only one item that's up, and that's the uh, uh, MTC. MTC appointment. Okay. Is that correct? Okay. That is, and uh, I last Friday I talked to uh, Becky. She's the City Selection Committee Secretary, and I believe that the three people who I've listed in the uh, your email, Alicia, Aguirre, Jerry Deal, and Gina Pappen, are still the only ones she had heard from as of that date. Mm -hmm. So, but all three of them are still running, as far as she knows. Okay, and uh, see, Jerry Deal is from Burlingame. Burlingame. Gina Pappen from Melbray. Melbray. And Alicia from so Redwood, Redwood City. City. Okay, so then um, at the city selection committee meeting at the end of this month, we need to vote for one of those three or put some kind of priorities on it. I take it. That's what we're getting, doing now, right? That's right. Okay. Um, and I'd like to hear from some of the, my colleagues who were at, you know, the meetings or what views they have. And I know we also have one of the candidates is in the audience, so you probably want to give her a chance to. Well, Cliff make was some in comments, the room. but but you might want to, you know, yeah. give us some background and, and also if you have a recommendation. Um, we're open. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, as you know, I, I had also put my name in the hat for that position. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't get enough votes. <laughs> but uh, you know, Gina, Gina uh, wound up uh, receiving the most votes. Um, she is also um, the candidate that has uh, approached me uh, the most times. Um, I have received uh, a letter. I think we all received a letter from from Jerry Deal. Um, I did get a, a call from Alicia Aguirre. Um, she thought I was still the mayor. I told her to uh, contact you, Ray, but that uh, we also um, vote as a council, not uh, just the mayor, uh, you know, gets to call the shots. Um, and so, uh, you know, we talked a little bit, and, um, uh, you know, I asked her some questions, and um, but I didn't get the same level of understanding the the subject matter that I that I did when I had my conversations with Gina. Um, Gina has also said that she would work with the city of Brisbane, that she would come to Brisbane, um, uh, because we're going to have we're going to have issues where we're going to need MTC funding, and we're going to need guidance to make sure that the things that we are looking for are going to be compatible with the conditions that MTC will impose. And so um, I, I would make a very strong recommendation that Gina Pappen be our choice um, for you, Mr. Mayor, when you go to the Council of Cities dinner. Okay. Any other? Uh... I, I concur with uh, Cliff's, uh, Cliff's uh recommendation with Gina I think she's the most knowledgeable of the candidates uh, she certainly has done her homework so and, uh, and this is her second time here and you know the probably about the fourth time I've talked to her about it so um, uh, I, I think she's the most knowledgeable candidate and okay. would represent well all right Jerry um, because Gina will be um, termed out of her current seat um, what are the implications for that on the MTC and I know that those were some concerns that were raised the last time when we were talking about our our preference and how we would direct the mayor to vote um, so I'd like to hear a little bit more about that and um, how um, our voting for her would would be implicated by her um, being termed out from her current seat and what that means to the seat and then what is um, her length of term or the possibility of it does that mean that the seat stays as a public seat instead of a uh, government seat hmm. okay yeah. those are good questions um, we could 
uh, I will say one thing, and then we can see. I know that uh, Mayor Pappen has some answers to those, but let's just see. I know that there is precedent for this. Yeah. Um, uh, a person I know quite well, as a matter of fact, Sue Limpert, uh, was in a very comparable situation. She was termed out of the San Mateo City Council and continued to serve on MTC quite a few years, I think. Um, so I know there's precedent for it. Uh, the question of whether the person is considered a public representative or an elected official representative, I, I don't know the answer to that. Does uh, the city attorney know the answer to that, or should we ask Mayor Pep? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Please. Honorable Mayor and Honorable Council Members, thank you very much for this opportunity again, and very good question. Um, I do, I'm not sure of quite of the designation that it would be. Uh, I will tell you that I plan to serve the entire four-year term and that in my city the term limits are flexible. In other words, you just have to be out for two years and I intend on running again. So there may be a portion, half of it, where I am elected at the beginning and hopefully at the end. So I intend to be a very strong representative uh, for each of the 20 cities throughout that entire time. And a part of that is being committed to communicating and learning what the needs are for each and every city. <clears throat> and this has been quite a learning experience for me going through this entire process because I am learning more and more about each and every city. We all have unique uh, or, um, common needs, but the unique needs are very, very important, particularly when it comes to MTC funding because many times that funding comes down very quickly. So I need to know what going in the priorities and the needs of Brisbane are. And that means for existing projects as well, because hopefully we can, as Cliff pointed out, the requirements that are developed in some of this fast funding are very important. And as a representative, which I hope I will be, I can help uh, make that those requirements fit the needs of each and every city here. So education and communication and an effort to really work together, because that's what it's going to take. I can't do this without you, without knowing uh, what your needs are, whomever you designate or the council as a whole. It's extremely important that I know what's happening in your city and where you're headed and what we can do to make the funding happen. Because I really, I got into this position and running for this feeling that we have not received our fair share and that we need that background moving forward so that we can have a good shot at that. So that's my goal. Um, and as the Honorable Mayor has noted, this is, uh, there is a precedent for serving uh, the seat, I believe, remains the same. It doesn't lose its quality as an elected position. You just, uh, you're elected by the representatives of all 20 cities, and that's what's so important here. But if you were not an elected official, you could not be appointed newly to this particular seat. Is that correct? I'm not sure of that. I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. It is a four-year term, is what I know, and that, you know, I don't know if somebody's ever gone before the Council of Cities as a non-elected person to run for, no, actually, well, I can assume, Sue, Sue as mm -hmm. um, yeah. the mayor has acknowledged, Sue Lempert must have gone before the committee again as a non-elected non person to renew her term. She served for multiple terms she, after she, she was on I the city council. It. I actually recall it, Terry. That, that Sue had, you know, come to the Council of Cities for that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. But but I think the initial um, term is, I believe, only from elected officials from the cities that are. Well, I don't know. As um, Clark has noted, if she came before the Council to renew her term, it, it would suggest it, otherwise. From what I under, from what I understood, and I could I could be wrong, that once the seat is held by someone who is not a official, an elected official, then it reverts to a private seat instead of a public <coughs> seat. Was my understanding of, wow. of how that? That's, I've never heard 
I mean, I, I mean, but this could be new information. I, I don't know about that. I, I could be wrong. Clark, did somebody run against Sue? Uh, yeah. Do we know? Generally, no. Not that I know of. Uh... Nobody would dare run against Sue Lempert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. The representation was that good. <laughs> that's what I hope to be. She, she, she was. Sue was a good representative. Yeah. And so I, I think it was. Uh, you know, she did set a precedence and. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, her son was in the assembly, just much like your father mm -hmm. was, and right. so it's. Uh, and her son was a supervisor. Yeah, so I, I couldn't answer it, Terry. Other than I know that that Sue had come to the Council of Cities at uh, different times, and uh, you know I used to see her there a lot. So it was as a representative of MTC. Oh, I. So whether I, it was a citizen at large, whether it reverts to that, or, I don't know. If, if what you're saying, that's, that's what your inquiry is. Yeah. I believe it, it, it reverts to a, a citizen's seat instead of an elected official's seat. But, but the, uh, the appointment to the position, and I'm going to make an assumption here, is always by the Council. mayors at the Council of Cities meeting at the end of the year. So if the if those mayors decide they want to appoint uh, a non-elected um, uh, person, then that could be their choice. Or they could say, no, we don't want to do that. There's somebody else who is uh, already serving on a council, and we're going to appoint that person. Yeah, because there's, there's still an appointment process that goes on. And yeah. it's not done by any type of election other than by the mayors of the city, because that seat belongs to the, the county. It's the county representative for all the cities, so. Yeah. May I ask for a clarification, uh, Council Member O'Connor? Um, so you're just worried about the designation as being um, as an elected or a, a private uh, individual? Uh, well, as an elected official holding a seat f as a county representative, um, it would be understood that you or whoever had it would be um, under some obligation to uh, represent their constituency um, in a responsible manner um, as I anyone agree. subject to being voted out if you don't. Um, and if it's a private person holding the seat, I'm not sure that there's the same um, stipulations oh, that way. I understand. Um, and, and I think that that's why ticked, usually it's a, a person who is an elected official that's there to remove any doubts that there's going to be fair representation in those guidelines. So that was I, my, my okay. concerns. Thank you for that clarification. Um, I can assure you, having being an elected official, I feel that throughout. And as I've stated, um, the term limits in my city let an individual come back and run again. So I hope that I will be an elected official throughout. But my, I feel very strongly about the obligations and the responsibilities that I'm taking on here. And I think Clark and I were discussing it earlier, that having run for office, you realize the importance of that and the significance of that. Really dealing with people, talking to people and other representatives. You have to be a person of your word moving forward, or you know you shouldn't be there. And I've run into this as this process has gone on, <coughs> that some people will give their word and some people will say things, and it, it doesn't turn out that way. But working through that is a very significant part of being an elected official. So I feel extremely strongly about that. And uh, my background in growing up in politics and representation, that's key. And, and that deals with the smallest aspect of you return the phone calls you get. From if you call me, if anybody calls me that's here, that we need to um, develop that relationship and that strength. There has to be accountability. There has to be responsible representation. And I assure you, that's where I come from, and that's what I'm committed to. I think I've proved that throughout my political career and um, also uh, as a state employee for the Attorney General's office. It's, it, it's important, and I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, uh, we haven't dealt uh, with each other, but um, I think you will 
Um, if you get to know me better, you'll, you'll see how committed I am to being responsible to whomever um, I represent. And in this case, it would be each and every city. And the uniqueness of each and every city I will be taking into account and hopefully moving forward as a strong advocate for you and the other cities because that's how we're going to succeed in the best way possible. So uh, I am here to respectfully request your support and vote on the 25th in Redwood City. Um, this is, as was noted, there are three candidates here. I'm hoping, I'm going in strong with a lot of support. Um, I'm, I feel that uh, if you, if I gain your support tonight and we move forward, if we can't make it through the first round, we will definitely make it through the second round. Um, and the importance of this position cannot be underestimated. Over four billion dollars in funding. And my goal is really to make sure that we're at the top of the line there. And for those who know me, I'm right up front there. And they will know San Mateo County. And they will know that what our needs are. And we have a lot of needs. And I, for years, have felt we haven't reached our importance. We're between Silicon Valley and San Francisco, and we are important. And we have a lot of great things going for us moving forward. And uh, with the investment or the leveraging of funding from MTC, I think we can make a lot of those projects a reality. So I look forward to that. I respectfully ask for your support and your vote. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any uh, further discussion? I, I, I would make a motion to, um, to choose. If there isn't any more discussion, I, I'd like to make a motion to choose uh, okay. Gina as uh, our vote for uh, the MTC position. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Now, do we worry about uh, what second. comes second? or? <laughs> No, I don't, it, it, so. I don't think so in this case because uh, I believe you go in with the most votes, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, so it becomes a question of which of the others throws in the towel, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? You're not throwing in the towel, right? Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not after that speech. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. You're welcome to thank stay, you. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay, so the next item on the agenda is the report from the two by two committee. Yes. Well, Cliff, I'll let you start. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so Thursday night we had our uh, council um, school board two by two subcommittee meeting. Uh, as, uh, as you're aware, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of issues at play. This is probably the, the number one topic. Uh, uh, within the community right now um, because uh, the school board will be deciding uh, whether or not to to merge on on the 17th on Thursday and so um, I had requested uh, to have a two by two meeting with uh, the school board and Ken Walker agreed and so we, we had our meeting and uh, we talked uh, a lot about uh, you know, some of the, the questions and concerns that the community has. Um, a lot of it uh, evolving around the financial uh, uh, items that uh, are at play. And uh, also local control and, you know, school board uh, members, you know, who, who would make up the, the school board if the, if the, uh, the two district, districts merged. And, uh, you know, there was some feedback from the community. Uh, and, uh, you know, both Clark and I, we kind of, kind of put it out there that, uh, that the, the school district is, is a, uh, the foundation of our, 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 one of the pillars, I don't know, maybe the foundation of, you know, of our community. I mean, there's, they're, they're intertwined. I mean, they, I was, uh, was talking with uh, one of the school board members uh, from Daly City after the meeting, and he, he came up to me and says, you know, I, I talked with uh, some of my, 
uh, some of the council members from Daly City, and they said, well, you know, usually we, and he told me that the council members from Daly City don't get involved with school district issues. And I said, well, you know, they have a, about 104,000 people. We have 4,000 people. Uh, our, uh, you know, the, 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 the things that happen with, with the school district also affect so many other parts of our, our community. And, and things that, that we do also affect uh, this, this school district in, you know, quite a, quite a degree. And so, um, you know, after hashing it out for a couple of hours, I mean, it was, it was pretty good, pretty good discussion. Uh, I, I would say both Clark and I, you know, came away feeling that there needs to be more, more dialogue, more information uh, before a vote can, uh, before a vote should happen to uh, move forward with, with merging. Um, and, and it isn't just so much the, you know, the financial questions that are out there, but then just also, uh, you know, getting the pulse of the community. Uh, if, if a general election was held, uh, um, it would be the, the total area that would be the new district. So uh, you would be looking at uh, two-thirds of the populace would be in Daly City, and one-third would be in Brisbane. And a lot of people thought that uh, perhaps there would be two elections, one for uh, the Bayshore District and one for the Brisbane District. And we found out that that wasn't uh, going to be the case. And so um, that, was, that was a concern uh, for us. And so, um, you know, by knowing that, you know, you really want to flush out, um, you know, more of the details. So, yeah, I'm not sure about the, the ratio. I know we have about 23, 2400 registered voters, and I, I believe Bayshore is smaller uh, population wise. Than I, I think it was just about yeah. daily, one third uh, panorama, yeah, panorama, one third panorama. Bayshore, one third Bayshore. And, and I mean, that was something that, that was brought up, and yeah. we, and that was something that was brought up during the meeting, and we didn't verify the accuracy of that yeah. uh, statement. It was, pro it, was, it was mentioned by uh, Ken Walker. Yeah. So, but I'm I'm not sure if that's the case. And then there's a little portion of South San Francisco, but uh, um, the nexus that they seem to be going on is that it would provide a better education for the children, and that kind of where you know. So it wasn't what what would really provide a better education. If they merged. Oh, if they merged, okay. If they merged, and, and I think that's the, uh, um, th that seems to be their biggest point from, from what I gathered, you know, and asking the question, and, uh, uh, but <clears throat> not really understanding the fiscal end of it either, you know, that uh, I don't really know exactly what that means either, because there's a report, it's kind of conflicting information, and so I guess the question was where it came up where, uh, Ken had specifically said, well, if you know, if you want it, <clears throat> that's to delay a vote, we'd like a resolution from the city council to request that. And it's like, you know, I, Cliff has a lot of passion for this. I've always kind of, you know, in the hands off work collaboratively with uh, the school district, but um, schools really are the foundation of our community. And so, I mean, what people, I think what voters want to know is how this affects me. How is this going to affect me? What's this going to do or not do for me? You know, what's this going to do for my child or not do it? And and there was different scenarios that were brought up, you know, because they were talking about closing a school over in uh, Bayshore because the schools seem to be in more disrepair than the ones in Brisbane and uh, and Robertson uh, 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 Intermediate School is the one that they're targeting is is potentially could be closed now <clears throat> over there in Bayshore they got the save Robinson school movement going on for <laughs> all this <laughs> so there's you know um, I, I think stuff that you know needs to be clarified before you take something to the vote and the vote is you know in mass there's no veto power from Brisbane and so, I mean, there's a lot of questions I think it would need to be answered. There's probably more details, like uh, uh, how's the new school school board going to look? How's it going to be elected? You know, when does that happen? You know, some of the uh, uh, details that would go along with that. If, if, you know, if it passes, you have that election, you know, do you appoint members then? 
or is there another election after that to elect members? You know, how, how, how does it work? Because, you know, you got five school board members there in Bayshore, five in Brisbane, and, you know, um, one, one of the representatives is in Southern Hills right now. So I don't know. And I, I talked to a lot of people over there in Bayshore District, and they're, they're not clear on it either. And they're not sure, you know, there's a lot of fear for them, you know, and uh, talking with an individual that knows a lot of people there, there's a lot of people there that don't even vote because they're not, they're either here illegally or they're not citizens. Either way, they can't vote. And he says there's a lot of folks there that aren't even voters. And then, you know, their question is, is, Gee, uh, you know, what happens if my child misses the bus? You know, uh, uh, they're going to Brisbane, and <coughs> how would they get to school? Because some of them don't even have cars, you know. And so there's, there's, you know, there's a whole, whole question there. And, and so, you know, the, the school board seems to be coming from that they think that uh, it's actually going to enhance the education. And, and I, I know that he said that, you know, I mean, there's two different, there are two different school districts. You know, Brisbane is what's termed as a basic aid, and Bayshore is a revenue limit. And a uh, you know, comment was made that if uh, Bayshore, if the two districts do combine, that uh, it will be a basic aid district. So I, you know, it's, I don't know, you know. So it's, 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 it was certainly an interesting conversation, but I didn't come away with any clarity on what it is, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I, I know there's yeah. a lot of folks that, that you know wanted to uh, there are really a lot. talk about it. You know that uh, that are here tonight. I think for you know, for that reason, some of them were there at the meeting. So yeah, you know, not not to get into the details of, of you know, like perhaps you know what our position would be you know, as individuals. You know, I think it's better to hear from the public and and get their input and get their guidance to help us to. Um, you know, get a better sense of, of, of what's happening. I have lots of questions about how this would affect Brisbane. Um, although my, my opinions probably don't matter too much, um, except that I want to make sure that Brisbane schools stay as good as they can for our children. Um, so I'd love to hear from the public. Um, we're not here to make a decision on it or give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, no, you're right. So it's informational only for us, so I'd like to hear from Okay. public. Um, I'm willing to bet that there's some people here who want to speak to this issue, and I see one hand up already, and I think it's Jennifer, right? Yeah, okay. Hello, council members and everybody else. Um, thank you for allowing me to address this issue. Um, my name is Jennifer Bousquet, and my child attends Brisbane Elementary. Um, I'm trying to think where to start. <sighs> Basically, um, on January 17th, the Brisbane School Board and the Bayshore School Board will make their decisions regarding merging the two school districts and moving the district forward to, um, and moving the process forward to a general vote of the people. And the information presented so far doesn't provide the basis for a responsible decision. Um, many citizens have signed a petition requesting that the school boards postpone any vote, um, deciding their positions on the merger until more information is provided and other options are fully explored. This will allow the citizens to have a more respectful voice in the decision-making process for the future of our school district. And we're hoping that the Brisbane City Council will support this action. Um, I've appeared before the council a few times, I think, um, when working with the Mothers of Brisbane. So I want to be very clear. I'm not up here representing the Mothers of Brisbane. Um, I'm talking about a cross-section of the Brisbane community. I'm talking about my neighbors and the people that I see at the cafe and the school. Um, I 
some of them I know, some of them I don't. I posted the petition only two days ago and almost 100 people have signed it so far. And there's a comment section and in a lot of the comments they're saying, we don't understand the impact, we have questions, we want more information, please delay this vote. Now, I know for the school board, they've probably been living and breathing this issue and looking at every nuance and talking about all the details, but the public hasn't. And we had a community forum in early December and now it's January and they're talking about voting on it already. And the forum, I, I know for me personally, just raised more questions than it answered. And I felt really at sea. Um, I'd kind of gone into the forum sort of on the fence about how I felt about the merger. I wanted to find out how it would benefit Brisbane. And I walked away from there feeling really disheartened because I didn't see any obvious benefits to Brisbane. Um, I did reach out to the school board members and I reached out to Tony Presta, our superintendent, and she was kind enough to meet with me. And none of the reasons that she gave me were compelling enough to make me feel that this was good for Brisbane. Um, I'm going off script, hold on a minute. So, I also attended, actually I also attended the study session that they had last week and you know, things happen sometimes where little light bulbs go on over your head and one of them was when they said, oh, we just found out that we have $100,000 that we didn't know about because we didn't think we were going to get any money from Prop 30 and Prop 30 passed and because we're a basic aid district, there's a dividend paid for that and so we're getting $100,000 we weren't even expecting. And I literally wanted to scream because I feel like, I'm sorry, we should be looking through the couch cushions for every nickel and we should know what money is coming and what we can count on and what we can expect. And if they were following that legislation and encouraging the voters to vote for it, they should know how it benefits their district. How could they not know that they were getting $100,000? Also from that m meeting, it sort of became clear that it was possible for them to close the budget gap this year and they don't have to make a decision right now. And I'm not saying that merging with Bayshore is the wrong decision. I still don't know. Right now I feel like it is, but maybe there's more that they can tell us that will persuade me otherwise. But they're not gonna be able to tell me that by Thursday before they vote. So I'm really hopeful that they will hear their constituency and they will delay voting on this because it's so important. Um, I just wanted to reiterate a couple of things that I heard Cliff say up here and also Clark. Um, I did verify with Tony Presta today about how the vote goes down. So if the Brisbane School Board and the Bayshore School Board vote on Thursday and they agree they want to do this. Then it goes before the public. The public votes for it. Let's say everyone in Brisbane decides they don't want this. It could be forced upon us and then we give up local control. And I was asking Tony if there was a way to broker this, like if you're imagining two companies merging and you want to negotiate things that you can get out of this deal. And I said, well, could we negotiate always having a school in Brisbane? Like, can we guarantee that we'll always have a school here if we merge with Bayshore? And she said, well, you know, we could put some language in like that, but really there's no guarantees because it will be a new board and we don't know what decisions they will make for this district. So 10 years down the line, you could have a totally different school board made up of, you know, members from uh, Daly City, Southern Hills, Brisbane, and they may not be as invested in our community. And you know what, if there's no school here, this community dies. You know, people leave. It just, it will be the death of us. So it just, it makes me really nervous to think of giving up our independence. I think culturally Brisbane prides itself on its independence. And I think we need to figure out what we need to do to be self-sustainable. And I know we may have hard choices, maybe, you know, and I, I'll, tr I'll try to wrap this up, I'm sorry, but I'm an involved parent. I worked on the last two parcel taxes. I went door to door. I worked on Bob Detmer's school board campaign. You know, I'm not just up here at the last minute critiquing this. I feel like I've been involved in the process all along. But I was also told when I went door to door with my branded material that said SOS, save our schools, I said to people, Ray, if you vote for this parcel tax, we will not close a school in Brisbane. Vote for this. And you voted for it. And we got the money. And now they're saying, oh, you know, if we don't merge with Bayshore, we may have to close the school. And I'm like, you are kidding me. You know, it just, it, it's so disheartening. And it, it also discourages parents from wanting to be more involved because we feel like we can't trust what we're being told. And I understand the situation with the governor and the state is, is so hard for the district to deal with. They don't know, you know, sometimes w what's black and what's white, the numbers keep changing. But the numbers have changed from the community forum that they held in December. Um, and they were different at the meeting I went to last week and another parent brought up the point that they were different and they explained why they were different.
And this person said, well, are you holding another forum to let the community know kind of the update, like where we're at, what's going on? And they said, no, we have no intention. And I just find that disturbing because you know, they had an opportunity to sell it to us as a community in that first week in December, and nobody was sold, and they're moving ahead anyway. So to me, it's like, what was the point of that forum? So anyway, I will remember what I wrote down here and give you the very last paragraph, which is, City Council members, please help preserve the heart of our community, our schools. Let the school board know it is too soon to move forward on this issue. They represent their constituency and need to listen to both us and the city of Brisbane, the government. I, I, even if you pass a resolution and it's, it's only symbolic, it will mean something and it will mean something to the citizens of Brisbane. And I would like to submit the petition um, that, like I said, has only been up two days and 94 people have signed it. It's going to stay up. I'm going to take it to the school board on Wednesday. So thank you very much for your time and should I give it to you or over there city clerk okay yeah. thank you thank you very much yeah thank you for that Jennifer <clears throat> Aaron I got a slip here right yep okay go for it <clears throat> a pretty passionate speech mr. mayor members of the City Council Thank you for letting me speak. Um, relative to the petition that Jennifer is talking about, I would really like it if we could publish that so people know right here, right now, who are watching, where they can actually go online and sign that petition. So if we can get that information. So we can make sure people know right away. Um, I read everything. I don't go to bed until 2 o'clock in the morning. I've read just about anything and everything I can about this potential merger with Bayshore. I've read every document, and I have to tell you right now, it's about as clear as mud. Um, as my elected officials, um, I expect a lot from you. I expect that when something difficult comes across your desk, that you are going to look at that, you're going to look at it until you've got the answers in black and white, very clear. Everybody who needs to speak on a matter to you about an issue has an opportunity to do that. The answers are all there. There's, there's no more questions left, and you make a decision. I am not seeing that from our school board. I'm very disappointed in all of them if they make this decision and go ahead with this vote on Thursday. You cannot make a decision when there are still so many questions that are unanswered. If people like me, who are one of your appointed officials, can read documents and sit there scratching my head saying, I don't know which way this should go after all of this time, and that they're going to rush to make this decision by Thursday. It's an abominable thing that we're doing. And I, from, from what I see, I completely agree with Jennifer. I don't know whether I think it's the right or not thing, but for sure right now, absolutely not. We shouldn't even be contemplating this when there are still so many unanswered questions. So whatever we can do to encourage our school board to put this decision off until the answers are clear, everybody is clear on it. I mean, I'm on this Facebook page, the residents of Brisbane. There is so much misinformation that people have been circulating. There are so many half-truths. There are so many opinions that are not fact, that are being put out there by lots of different people. And the people who are in our community are confused. We're all confused about this. We need the answers before a decision's made. So can you lean on the school board, please? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jamie? Thank you again. Uh, I'm a former teacher, having taught third grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, nine, 10, 11, and 12 for 23 years. I can tell you that the last thing you ever want to do is give up control of your schools and have your school board be run from some other city. I, I can't imagine any of our school board members thinking that would be a good idea. And I certainly hope that you guys beat a big drum to say that that doesn't happen. We can't give up that kind of control. This scare tactic of <clears throat> our children will get a better education, if, if that, that's baloney. Uh, 
the people here of Brisbane are smart enough and willing enough and hardworking enough to make sure that our kids will get the education they need. We don't need to have someone in another city telling us how to educate the kids here. Believe me, they're much bigger cities. They're going to have a lot more constituents, and those constituents are going to put a lot of pressure on those board members to push for the schools in their district, or let's say the schools in their neighborhoods, in their cities, as opposed to the school here or the schools here. We just need to beef up our efforts to take care of our own. We can do that. This isn't a time when we all of a sudden need to be looking for someone else to give us guidance in Brisbane. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a smart group of people. We needn't look elsewhere. I certainly hope that you put a lot of pressure out there that the citizens sign this petition, that our board members do not think for a minute that it will be better for us, better for the kids, or in any way better for them, because it won't be long before they won't be on the school board. I'm pretty convinced that would happen. So as a teacher, and somebody who really cares about schools here, I know you do, and I know it's critical that we keep control for the sake of our kids. Thank you. Thank you. I have two other slips, uh, Barbara Ebel. Uh, Barbara Ebel, 349 San Bruno Avenue. Um, thank you for letting me address you. Um, I was originally, when we started talking about this two years ago, I thought the merger sounded like a good idea. And I got to say, it just doesn't feel that way anymore. I haven't drawn a firm conclusion, because like, like everybody else has said, there's a lot of questions. But um, mostly, I just want to uh, lend another voice to everything Jennifer said, because I think she touched on almost every issue that I have. Um, I swear, I don't go to every school board meeting. Environmentalism is my thing. I really want to believe that my school board representatives are going to do a good job in my stead. Um, but what's going on right now is just kind of making me crazy because it seems like the, the train is on the tracks and it's going to go straight ahead, cliff be damned. Um, and I wanted to um, applaud you guys for even thinking about making this resolution. I realize you may decide that, that it's not your purview, you might want not want to make that leap and go out on that limb, but I at least want to say thank you for thinking about it because the schools are so focal to this community and um, as much as I kind of want them to take care of themselves, it, it's, it's important and I I'm, try to keep my eye on it and uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Carolyn? Hi, I have been listening to all the comments from all the concerned citizens, and I do want to bring up that um, I believe we have somewhere between 1,750 houses in Brisbane to 895. I'm not sure exactly the number. Uh, I know from reading this that um, Bayshore area is planning on increasing their number of housing by 1585. I don't think that, um, and I don't know how many people are going to be in this uh, school district from that area, but I can tell you right now, I don't see that we will have an opportunity to have people on our, um, on the, um, on the board, the school board, you know, if, I mean, we just might be overwhelmed and swamped. Um, you know, I don't know if there's going to be any housing from the Bay Baylands, but I just feel that it, we have to think about our citizens and our schools and, and make certain that we have our people on our school boards. And I'm, I'm very concerned about this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Renee? Good 
Good evening, Renee Marmion, 125 Elfin Court. Um, I don't know exactly how I feel. I sit on the fence kind of both sides. Um, I am an employee at Lipman Middle School in special ed. I am also the CSEA president of the classified union. This merger, um, it's difficult in both ways. Um, we're in trouble if we don't do it. We're in trouble if we do do it. Um, I'm representing 27 classified employees and a lot of their jobs will possibly, well, they will be cut. A lot of people will be cut if we don't merge. Some will still be cut if we do merge. Um, and the new board that will come on, just like you, they're going to be um, citizens that are very concerned about their school district, because it will be one school district. Doesn't matter where they live, Daly City, Brisbane, Bayshore, it'll be their school district. They will do the best, just like you guys do, the best decisions that they will make. This has been going on for two years. A lot of questions already have been answered. Um, a lot of people might not remember that, um, but they, they do come together in these meetings and try to answer as many questions as they can. Um, a lot of other questions get into the rumor section where on Bris, Brisbane, Brisnet, the residents of Brisbane, and that's why it's really everybody needs to come to the Bayshore meeting tomorrow night to hear their side, see what they have to say, their school board meeting. A lot of people will not come out, just like, you know, nobody ever comes out for the budget, but they'll come out for the toilets. Um, <laughs> uh, so Bayshore's meeting is tomorrow night. Brisbane's school board meeting is, is Wednesday night, and then their joint meeting is Thursday. Everybody, you know, they, they kind of want to make a decision, so they want to know where do they go forward, what happens. Um, Robertson School is in dire need of repair. If we don't merge and we have all these cuts here, one of our schools might get in dire repair and we don't have the money to fix it. If we had somebody in this community uh, the financial district, if they could just cut us a check for a million dollars, that would be great, you know, if somebody was out there to do that. So please, everybody, and you too, if you can, come to all these meetings the next three nights and really get educated. Um, it, it would be beneficial to everybody. Then, then if it does go to, if, they, if the school boards, both of them decide that's what they should do, I don't know really how you guys stand, what's your involvement. You know, I, I heard it was just a resolution. I think it's just your opinion, but I, I, I don't know more than that that you can really do. It's like you said the other um, cities, they really don't get involved with the school district. That's it's, true. Yeah. A lot of cities yeah. don't. So I, I don't know. Just, you know, it's just like my opinion, your opinion, everybody's opinion, but it's your vote, you know, if it does go to a vote. vote. So um, I thank you, and that's my two cents. Okay, thank you. Camille? Okay. Um, both of my kids went to the schools in San Francisco. Lowell High School and, and the rooftop. And I'm very familiar with the bureaucracy that goes on with the big school districts. And uh, it is a matter of uh, the big, uh, big brothers, is he going to really going to swallow the younger brother? In this particular case, we have the situation where we are a small town we have a very good, uh, you know, a lot of people get attracted to, uh, to Brisbane because we have a good school here. And now we are thinking about merging with, uh, with uh, Delhi City and Bayshore School District. My opinion, I don't think that's a very good idea. The reason being that any government agencies or any of those uh, agencies where you have a bureaucracy involved, the people with a bigger, you know, num bigger number of, pe a larger number of people, they have the voice 
and you can see that's the reason that a lot of a lot of countries even if you look at the I'll give you the example of my own country Pakistan and India the reason that they divided because there was a fear that India being a larger population they're going to swallow the Pakistan and that was the reason for that so in my opinion we have a great system going here and what we should do is we try to concentrate on trying to get as many different type of funding resources we can to strengthen our own school district here and with the proposition that already passed I think the dire need for, for merger is not there. Uh, the governor made the promise that all the money will go towards the education and we have to make sure that that be the case. The funds are not transferred to general fund to, uh, for the other, other type of uh, you know, programs. And that's the things we should be looking at it rather than trying to solve the problem of another district by merging it to, together with our district. I don't want to be as selfish and say they should take care of ourselves only because they are the next door neighbor to us. But then what happens is that that next door neighbor is a big neighbor. If we are the same equal size, then it's possible that we may work together. But if you have a 10% vote and the other one has 90% vote, how is it going to work? So I think we have to put some sense to the school board here. And, and also it's very important that we should all understand exactly what it means, a merger. What is the merger? What are the conditions? How it's going to work? From what he, I hear today, many of the people don't have any idea, clear idea as what's going to, going to happen. So may I suggest that the council member maybe set up a separate session where somebody from both the both the districts can come and for once really clarify what's going on with this merger how it's going to to uh, if affect the both the cities and first of all we should also be looking at as how it's going to benefit us because we come first and i will suggest that whatever decisions you make and whatever influence you can have on the school board, try to clarify first before you make any decisions, and please make the decision for the benefit of this city and their small kids that go to school here. Thank you. Thanks, Mia. That's the end of the slips that I have. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Michael. Good evening again, Mr. Mayor, City Council. My name is Michael Barnes, Brisbane resident. I spent eight years on the City Council, and I believe I spent four years on the School 2x2 two two subcommittee. At that time, we respected the jurisdiction of the elected officials of the school board. We took care of the city, and the school board took care of the schools. We realized that our neighbors on the school board were capable, thorough, hard-working elected officials who did a great job educating the kids of Brisbane and Daly City. That seems to have changed. At the community forum, Brisbane City Councilwoman Seppi Richardson stood up in front of the entire room and threatened the school board with recall over the merger issue. She did this without understanding the school district's challenges or providing a solution. Tonight, I've heard council members and members of the public say they don't understand the merger issue as well. And if the city council does not understand it, then I don't think that it's wise the city council make a recommendation to the school board how to conduct their business, because the school board does understand the issue. I understand the council may be considering taking a vote to tell the school district how to conduct its affairs. 
I ask that you do not take an agenda minute vote on the school board's business. I ask that you respect the jurisdiction of the elected officials of the school board who are doing a fine job in very difficult economic times. It has taken a proposed merger to get the city council and the citizens engaged. I think that's a good thing. I've been attending school board meetings for a year and a half, both Brisbane and Bayshore and Jefferson Union High School District. I have only rarely seen a Brisbane parent at any of those meetings. At those meetings, the school board has considered all kinds of different opportunities, and they have found all of them to be lacking. They've come to the merger as the best solution to their problems. They looked at unification, but they found that unification was not feasible. It violates a state education code 35753 in at least three separate points, and whatever is proposed cannot violate the education code 35753 on any of nine points. People have said the information is inadequate and these other options should be explored. I think that the school board has explored these options and can answer these questions. And I think now that people are interested, they will get answers to their questions. They will start coming to the meetings. And I think that's all good. If the school board does decide to proceed with merger and they take a vote and both school boards want to try well, want to have the people decide whether or not they should merge. It will give them five months to educate the public. Now, in my eight years sitting where you are right now, in almost every big decision we ever made, nobody showed up until the night of the decision. And I think that's what we're facing here. I think where the school board failed was they didn't trick people into thinking they were making a decision six months ago and get people engaged. They did their due diligence. They did it well. They did it publicly. I was there. I listened to it. I heard it. And, and now people are engaged. And that's great. As far as the confusion over the, the finances of the Brisbane School District today, tomorrow, merged or individual, again, having been on the council for eight years, you know that finances change every week, every month. You'll get reports from staff that say, We're, the state's not giving us this money now. We have to go, our revenues are down. Quarter to quarter, we don't know what the tax revenues are gonna be. Same thing happens with school districts. And so they are updating their numbers every week. They're trying to find money wherever they can. I don't think anybody in the education community knew of all the impacts of Proposition 30 until after it was passed and the state sat down and did all their calculations. As far as not trusting another city to uh, educate your children, right now, Brisbane Elementary School District manages the education of children in two cities. And I believe the parents at, in Daly City in the uh, Southern Hills area are very happy with the job the Brisbane Elementary School District has done in educating their Daly City children. And having attended all these board meetings over in the Bayshore neighborhood, I can tell you that the parents over there are every bit as concerned about the education of their children as our parents are over here. And they're every bit as fearful of Brisbane as Brisbane is of Daly City. I've come to the conclusion that everybody wants the best education for their kids possible and they will fight to get it. And if it's one district, they will have to provide a good education for all kids. The district will not have the option to not educate Brisbane children. The, the district will be required to educate Brisbane children. So the fear of another city, the, the fear of an outsider, I, well, it's just fear. And if people had Spend the time I've spent over in the Bayshore neighborhood, I don't think they'd be very afraid. And that is all I have to say. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Dee Dee?
Hello, uh, my name is Dee Dee Porter. I am a Brisbane resident and mother of two, one who's at Brisbane Elementary. Um, I am also the co-chair of the Mothers of Brisbane, and I am here to ask you to please pass a resolution asking the Brisbane School Board to delay their vote on the proposed merger with the Bayshore School District. I've heard a lot of reasons uh, supporting the, the proposed merger. I've heard a lot more reasons uh, to, to not pass the, the merger or not to merge. But the end result is, or the, the general consensus is that we need more time to understand this. This, I, I was at the community forum, sitting at your table, and uh, you know there were a lot of questions that came up to say that the school board has educated us about what happened. People came away with that with more questions than answers. We don't have all the answers. There are possibilities that need to be explored. And the issues of the proposal need to be clarified and the potential impacts need to be explained. The, mothers, the Board of the Mothers of Brisbane, uh, the Board of Directors of the Mothers of Brisbane, has passed a resolution to ask the school board to delay their vote. And I am here to ask you to please do the same. Uh, I could go into a lot of the reasons for and against the, the merger are mostly against, but uh, but I do want to urge that the, the urgency of this is that if they vote to move forward with this proposal, then it goes to the public vote, we potentially lose our voice, we potentially lose our veto power for this issue that could have an extreme impact on our community and our kids. We can't let that happen without knowing more about this. We need to have all the facts. So the urgency is to have them delay the vote. I'm not saying that, you know, vote one way or the other, but have them delay until there is more of an understanding and consensus. And uh, the other thing that I've, I've heard, I actually wasn't there, but um, that a member of the school board has asked um, that the city council pass resolution on their position. So this is not so solely coming from the citizens, that the school board does want to hear your opinion. So please uh, join us in asking for a delay on the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle. Michelle Salmon, Brisbane resident, lifelong Brisbane resident, to borrow a statement <laughs> from John. School board business is our business um, as a city. And it's not just about property values, but it goes way deeper than that. And, and if we roll back the history books to like 1960, 1959, 1958, before we were a city, when we had an established school district, one of the reasons that we became a city, one of the driving forces that, that really pushed us to incorporation was the issue of our school district and our school district um, having too much power over the people of Brisbane to control what happened. And that's how we lost El Dorado Street and, and quite a lot of housing um, around, around Brisbane Elementary School. And so our history is inexplicably tied with the Brisbane School District. And, you know, I think it's a little bit condescending to think that people aren't paying attention or that, you know, we're, we're, you know, we only show up when it comes to a crisis. That's not true. People in Brisbane pay attention and a lot more attention than um, most other cities. And I think that people have been paying attention and have been trying to sort this out for quite a while. But I think the pressure is really on because um, I think that there's a lot of leverage by a lot of very subtle, very below the, below the surface leverage by interests uh, involved with UPC to push the merger so that in the future we'll be held hostage um, for the funds that, de that development might bring um, from the Baylands, and that it, that this may make anxious parents more likely to make um, unwise short-term decisions under pressure, because you know the Baylands is not in the Brisbane school district, and that's really the issue that's at hand here. But Baylands development, where it would produce revenue for the school district to save a school or save this school or that school, is is far down the path. 
but we're feeling a whole lot of pressure right now to make a really quick decision when there are a lot of other issues in play. Um, the state of California, our new current legislation is slowly trying to chip away at some of the damage that Prop 13 did to, did to California um, and the schools in California with funding. And it's mainly in the area of, <coughs> of corporate taxes, not necessarily personal residential taxes. So I do think that you are in a position to take a stand as you represent the people of Brisbane as our elected officials and as our voice. And school board business is very much Brisbane's city business because it has a lot of long-reaching impl implications, not just, w I mean, it's like, yes, they'll, whatever school district will quote unquote be required to educate Brisbane children, but where? Where will they educate them? Will they educate them on some new school built out on some toxic area that the kids will have to be bused to? Will it be, you know, Midway Village? Will it be in Bay Shore? Will it be in Brisbane? I mean, yes, schools require maintenance, but Brisbane Elementary School will be standing long after the most recent school in our district crumbles to dust because it was built that way. And I just feel that, that, that the Brisbane City Council should take a stand and, and help encourage the people to be able to have a more informed decision, get more facts, find out what the timeline really is, find out what the pressures really are, and, and hold out for, you know, because once we merge, there's no separating again. There just isn't. And, and if our fathers had thought that this, that, that annexing the Baylands would cause this kind of problem on our school district, they might have let it go, Clark. They might have let it go, go. But they annexed that as a benefit to Brisbane, not to cause this kind of, of agony for the schools at this point and for the parents. So I think we should really approach this very, very cautiously. And I'm not thinking that you should tell them how to vote, but I'm certainly thinking that you should ask, weigh in, give your opinion as, as our elected officials that prudence would be in order and, and waiting and getting more information and really playing out more scenarios before we, we make this leap. Because this leap is not one where you're gonna be able to climb back up from. It is, it will, it's, once it's done, it's done. So, thank you. Daily, thank you. <clears throat> Daily City hated us for years over that annexation. <laughs> that <was laughs> they, they, they wanted to be the second city of the Bay of the Breakers, so. Okay. <laughs> Historical note. Yeah, yeah, right. I remember that. I remember we need a historical note. We know where to get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these uh, lifelong residents of Bristol. Uh, <laughs> um, so, anyone else? Jerry. Uh, Jerry Cool, resident of Brisbane. Um, Michelle made some very interesting points. Um, the school district is responsible for the schools but you are responsible for the entire city. And so your opinion is definitely very valid. And to make that, that opinion known to everybody would be very important. And also the point about where our children are educated. That's all I want to say. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. <laughs> all right, it's in our lap now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I did want to uh, point out one thing, or maybe you have the city attorney pointed out, because this question was raised as to whether we actually have the authority to act in any way and uh, what, uh, what the limits are on what we can do as it is currently agendized, so I will defer to the city attorney. <clears throat> so. The city council does not have any direct authority or jurisdiction as was mentioned by a number of the speakers with regard to the school district. You are two separate entities. Um, on the other hand, as was also mentioned by a number of speakers, uh, you do have the ability, if you so choose, to um, comment on something that you feel 
pertains and affects the, the population. So the council could decide to um, take a vote on um, addressing the school district with regard to the proximity of its, its uh, action. Um, it wouldn't have any effect on the school district that would be binding. It would simply be putting your two cents in. Uh, you do not actually have a resolution, I don't believe, before you, at least staff hasn't prepared anything. Um, so I don't know that a resolution would necessarily be in order, but you certainly could um, assess the sentiment of the council as a whole and then send a letter under the mayor's signature that indicates what the viewpoint of the council is. Again, it's, it's totally up to you as, a, as an optional matter. Okay, thank you. Um, Terry, you want to weigh in since we've heard from Clark and Cliff? Um, I think it's very important that we have a local school district that has control um, by the kids it's being, for the children it's being uh, provided for. And I think that Brisbane has always been very supportive of their school district. And we've shown that with the parcel taxes and the special assessments that we've uh, put upon ourselves to um, increase the level of funding for our, our children. I found it interesting in the last election cycle that Brisbane overwhelmingly um, in the school district voted yes on a property tax, parcel tax, where the other district or other portions of the district did not. And it was radically so that the involvement financially um, was here in Brisbane and was not as strongly supported in the other, dis other areas of the district. And so that's a concern for me if we have a larger voting block on outside of Brisbane that we would not be able to get those funds needed passed here locally to give the students what we think they deserve. I do think that there's concern over uh, potential students in the Baylands and that we'd want them to if, if there is housing there and, and children living there, that we would want them to be part of Brisbane. But I think that is something that should be decided once the land use has been decided there and not before, because we shouldn't count our chickens before we have any. So I do have concerns also what would happen to the parcel taxes that are already levied on our school district, and if those taxes would be um, sent over and added on to Bayshore District's um, current property holders as a parcel tax to make it even and equitable. And if not, does that mean our parcel tax go away because we'd be assessed specifically for benefits that were going to a different school district or a different area of students yeah, um, to be benefited? So I have definite concerns on, on the equity of that kind of program. I don't know enough about the deal to um, say it's good or bad, but I've heard enough locally that I have concerns and would not be um, against sending a recommendation for a slowdown for more information. Do you want to respond to any of the public testimony? <clears throat> well, I'd like to get a clarity on a, you know a couple things too, because I mean, <clears throat> certainly uh, it's kind of an interesting position to be in, because uh, mm -hmm. you know I always have recognized their anonymity as being a separate, <clears throat> you know, total political structure. And but we have had a collaborative working agreement, and and we came together, you know, in our two by two meeting, which is a formal structure of the school board and uh, the the city council of Brisbane, and Cliff and um, Ken Walker, who's on the school board, of course, uh, 
um, had talked and decided to have this meeting and it, it did come up you know during the meeting specifically if, uh, from Ken that if you wanted us to delay voting on this as a school board then should send something from the whole city council you know in, in that regards and you know I agree I mean I don't know enough about it Terry to, to say I'm in favor of it or, or, or not either and I heard that from most of the speakers here tonight with the with the exception of maybe two and uh, uh, Michael and uh, you know who who has gone to all the school board meetings and so you know he, he probably does know a lot more you know but uh, it's clear that majority of the parents don't <clears throat> And if we ever did something like that, we say, well, let's send it to an election, but we're not quite sure what the details are. We haven't got them to you, but we'll get them to you. And it's like, you know, you're going to get shot. <clears throat> and I think that's what really makes people angry, and that's where a lot of the angst comes from. And so, you know, I think that, uh, you know, while our school board members, I, I think they do do a good job, you know, that, uh, um, you know they do work hard their their financial structure is is different than ours and i think stuart you would attest to this uh, we have much greater flexibility than the school has much greater flexibility i mean they are really subject to the state and property tax and and i've heard you know thrown around about oh the baylands you know if you combine the two school districts the baylands and uh really the baylands is i mean it really is far out there because you know we kind of went through the the process that you know uh what happens with the city council that um we're going to go get our draft eir for the baylands next month sometime the 28th of february john is that where you're at right now <laughs> that has a, a hundred yeah that's right, yeah, right. 120 <laughs> day 120 day comment period and then, you know, the consultant has to respond to those comments. That's going to take another couple, you know, a couple of months, four months, whatever, before you have like a, a final draft. Is that, and then that goes before the planning commission and, and, you know, the whole process. And then when it comes, you know, that's comes to the city council, we're going to use that final draft to formulate a survey on what can and can't be allowed out there to formulate a new specific plan that the voters can vote on and if that's passed or not passed you know i mean then you know that all determines what's going to happen and we're talking what clay maybe 2015 2016 and th 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 does that sound like a, a reasonable time frame uh what i'm laying out here yeah as reasonable as any yeah <laughs> so, but the the one thing that people don't r realize too is, is that if say say it's passed uh, a specific plan is passed in 2016 and they shoot right out of the gate and start building stuff well with what the state legislature did on on getting rid of the redevelopment agency agency that combines both agencies and we have what 26 28 30 million dollars in debt of rda debt that has bonds tied to it that has to be paid off and that tax increment the schools wouldn't be seeing the money from it that's going to be paying the debt and that's going to be years and years before that debt's paid off you know and a lot of people don't really understand that and so you know you're talking in the 2020s late 2020s maybe you'll start seeing a trickle i don't know i mean well uh, my my concern, and I, I agree totally with you, um, but even if today we said, sure, build whatever you want out there, and gave them the permit, we'd still, just like Sierra Point has permits issued right. for development that may be a blank spot on the slate for another 25 50 years well, we really don't know how long before something generates revenue even if we were to give an approval for a project tomorrow right i mean that, that's a, that's the unknown and, and that's a good I'll point terry it. because sierra point is is a similar development being on a landfill but much smaller scale and it's just over 50 percent 
build out in 30 years. And so, I mean, that's, you know, 160 acres or something like that. So, I mean, it, it's that part of the puzzle is just not even part of the puzzle well, we right now as far as I'm concerned. It is, it is way out there in the future. I mean, but we're talking about, you know, I mean, my grandkids are going to be grown. Right. We you know can't what I mean? count on funding from the Baylands to support our school district or a consolidate or a, a, a joined school district. Yeah, and 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 the point of uh, the point of all this is 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 because people don't have the information. It, I I think it's prudent for us to to go ahead and 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 send something from the city council. Is because I mean we're not telling them what to do. I mean, in a sense, we're not saying we're not going to support this because, you know, you know, I want to support, but I want to know what it is I'm supporting. I want to know that this really is good for Brisbane. I want to know this is good for my grandkids. You, you know what I mean? We you close like the some school. Some safety, some assurances. Well, uh, yeah. We know what we're I mean, you close the school in Brisbane, if, you know, that may happen, may not happen. I mean, you know, there's all these things that fly around that, uh, you know, Cliff said at the beginning, you know, we, and I think everybody here agrees that our schools really are our foundation of this community. And if your schools, you start closing the school here and there, that could start affecting your property values. People say, oh, well, they closed the school or whatever, you know. I mean, a lot of people come here that moved here, you know, because they see, oh, well, they got good test scores and then when they get here and start seeing Brisbane they're like wow what a, <laughs> where's this place been you know I mean you know, it's just a, a little jewel you know and and so you know that local control it, it is a factor and I deal with a lot of folks that live in the Bayshore district as I said earlier and and they have a fear too they have a fear and there's a lot of people over there that you know like I said don't vote <laughs> You know, and they have a fear. They have school-aged children. They want to know what happens to their kids. So, you know, it's it's on both sides. And I I think <laughs> a lot of people have angst that you know that <clears throat> you know, they have questions how this is going to work, what it's going to look like, you know, and stuff like that. Is is those are legitimate questions? You know, I mean, if if we were merging with Daly City or South San Francisco as a city, we need one. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, it's kind of almost similar, you know, on how it functions. But, you know, uh, people wouldn't want to lose their local control of it. So I, I think it's uh, I think it'd be OK to, to send something just to, to request that the board uh, delay a decision on whether to uh, merge or not and and have more community forums you know lend lend this put it put it on tv whatever to to get this information out there that, that folks are asking for you know that uh, uh apparently they probably do have you know but it doesn't seem to be really clear because i'm not sure the picture is really developed fully yet so i would think that's a good idea and i think that lending um use of the facility and be able to televise some of the meetings um, if we're able to do that separated from the school board, I think would be also a good idea. Yeah, actually, we can uh, televise stuff without uh, any costs other than the building operation. Is that right, Clay? Because, I mean, we don't have to do it like what we do with the city council. Is that because we do all our uh, commissions and committees? Or... You, you can do it without the cameraman if that's what you're asking. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Um, we had talked at some point about. You know, we're going to do this survey uh, about various things relating to the Baylands. And one of the things that we had talked about was uh, that survey, which will be later this year, we could incorporate some questions that relate to people's opinions about the, the schools in Brisbane. And so my question is, you know, did that possibility come up at the two by two meeting? You know, did was that discussed? Are they interested in that or was it just get no, no, it wasn't we discussed. Um, no. Wasn't even discussed. Yeah. No, no. Um. no. It got you know into you know some of the. It got a little contentious at times, you know, a little, a little heated, but you know, but it, but it was good. I thought it was a good meeting, you know, from from that sense. But, but it brings uh, up more, you know, more questions. I think you know, some of the folks <clears throat> said it best that they have more questions than answers now. Okay. But no, that wasn't discussed. Wasn't discussed. Okay. No. Cliff, did you want to say more? 
Yeah, just just real briefly. Um, you know, I I totally agree with uh, Clark and Terry and just said and and all the people who who have spoken tonight uh, about wanting more time. Um, I, you know, as a council member, I, I I've probably been a little maybe a little bit too much out in front on on this than I, maybe what I should have. Um, but you know, I really care about this issue, and. Um, you know, when you're a council person, uh, you represent everybody in the, in the city, and that includes parents, that includes kids, and um, but you also have to find that 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 line that you don't cross, and and um, you know you don't want to you don't want to go there, and uh, I'm glad that you know we're talking about not making you know a determination to support it or be against it, but just provide more information so that uh, you know we can make a, a decision as as a community um, you know Michelle brought up the point about uh, you know once uh, uh, the general vote happens and if it was to merge uh, it would be it would be difficult it'd probably be impossible um, to to go back I mean there there are laws I mean I've been reading a lot about this stuff and and there is one particular law that that uh, that would make it extremely difficult and I don't think that we could um, you know change that um, and so you know I just want to say to, to the school board members that I've had you know some issues with and and that you know I do respect you you know tremendously and that uh, there's gonna be those times when we're not gonna see eye to eye and if there was ever something that the council um, was recommending that was going to be a negative impact on the school district. I would I would expect those the school board members to to come to me and, and and share their opinion. You know, it isn't that you cannot talk. It isn't that you can't have communication with each other. I think when you when you put up these these barriers where you say you can't do it or is that is not uh, it's not kosher to do it then. Then you start to have these issues where there's there's talk, and it's in 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 that talk, you could be assumptions that um, eventually, uh, you know, they don't they don't provide a good dialogue for for the community as a whole. So, yeah, so I, I'm 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 in favor of of moving forward with some kind of uh, agenda minute decision that mm -hmm. uh, asks for more time as well. And, and and I think Ray, I mean the, the the prudent course of action. I mean for that. I mean for the school board is I I think that if this is what they really want to do, you want to get that message out there, and that if you know aren't listening to folks at the beginning of the process, you're not going to be able to sell them in the end. You, you know what I mean? I, I think and you I, you understand that, and I think that's an important important point you know the, the, from a baseline and I think if they really want this to be successful is you don't want it to be unsuccessful right and if you take it to an election too early and it's not vetted out it's gonna fail I, I believe that yeah okay um, <clears throat> I just have a, a couple of thoughts because just about everything has been said, I think. Um, I think it's very important, and I agree with some of the people who have said this, and including Michael, that, that we need to make really clear that we're not getting ourselves into the areas of responsibility of the school board. I mean, they have their own special responsibilities, right. and, and we have to make it clear that we understand mm -hmm. that. And, and whatever we say, a motion or a letter or what have you, I think you know that should be the the lead-in paragraph. You know, we're just giving this uh, as you know an opinion that that came out of our discussion of this, and, but we don't want to interfere in any way with, with their responsibilities. I think it's important to, yes. to note that. Um, <clears throat> I also think that you know that if, if we give them. Uh, you know, based on the public testimony that we had, that a great majority of people feel that, you know, we should have more time uh, to consider these complex issues. Um, that we could make some offers, you know, collaborative offers, like making the, 
this uh, facility available and even put it on TV, um, making a specifically available to add some questions to the survey. I mean, these are things we can help them to, you know, to get the information out there, to find out more what the people are thinking. Um, you know, those are ways that we can work together. And hopefully they'll, they'll see it or perceive it that way. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the approach that, that sure. I would like to take. No, I think it's a very reasonable approach. So, and maybe uh, I would entrust you and staff to work to cobble together a letter. It needs to be pretty quick, though. Oh yes, <laughs> so, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> to to state that and that you know, and that's kind of the gist of it. And I'm sure Jennifer is going to give her. Uh, whatever signature she has on Wednesday, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so, uh, so you're making a motion to that effect, I take it? Yes, that's a motion. Okay, who would I'll like to second? I'll second it. Second it, any further discussion? Um, not on the motion, but I, I would like to see if we could announce the place and time of those meetings that are taking place later in the week. And with that, I'll vote yes. Okay, so uh, without further discussion. Beg pardon? Yeah, Bay Bayshore has their um, school board meeting tomorrow, 6 o'clock, at um, Boys and Girls Club. Okay. And we have ours at 6 o'clock on Wednesday at Lipman, and then the joint meeting is 6 o'clock on Thursday at the Bayshore Boys and Girls Club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, Don. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, any further discussion? I think we're good. No, we vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Would my colleagues like to take a little break? Yes. <laughs> sure. Okay, yeah. five-minute break. <clears throat>